Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10am if you're in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. <laughs> Smurf free barbecue, blah, 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 that's right. We in that engine yet? <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> Um, we are going to be jumping into the Unreal Engine 4.25 today. But before we do that, there was one asset that I'd forgotten. So don't worry, I've UV mapped it. I've um, vertex colored it. We just have to take it into Substance Painter and texture it up real quick. It won't take very long. It's just a, um, what do they call it? It's like a grill for the front of the fireplace, you know, that stops the things from popping out and setting the house on fire. I forgot to create that. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do first up. But it won't take very long. It's only going to have a metal texture on it. So, and then we're going to jump into the Unreal Engine 4.25, which is the latest version of Unreal. Actually, I believe the new version is 4.25.1. Uh, I'm not using the point one update just yet because um, a couple of people have made some comments on the Epic Games forum that there's a couple of problems with it. I don't know. Uh, so I'm just going to hold off on updating that just yet. That and the fact too that uh, I'm not using the NVIDIA build, uh, sorry, I'm not using the Epic Games build of the engine, so you're not the one that you know when you when you <laughs> start up the launcher, you can install the engine. I'm not doing that. Uh, the game studio and I, we're, we're working with a, a different fork of the, of the engine. So we're working with actually with the NVIDIA fork of the engine. So it's gonna grab a drink. So yes, uh, and the fact that uh, that has not been updated to 4.25.1 yet. That's the other reason we're not working with a 0.1 update. So, um, I can't go into too many details with the NVIDIA build of the engine. Apart from saying, you can download it and you can compile the build yourselves and, and use it if you want. Um, the main advantages of the NVIDIA build fork of uh, Unreal are that NVIDIA have made a couple of changes to the engine with regards to real-time ray tracing that, that are very useful. Uh, and also, if you use the NVIDIA build of the engine, you have uh, access to DLSS 2.0, which is very good, I have to say. Um, so yeah, that's the reason we're using the NVIDIA build. If you do guys want to check out the NVIDIA build, you can download the fork from NVIDIA directly. From, um, from GitHub. Now you do need to contact NVIDIA. You, you need to have a contact at NVIDIA if you want to use DLSS 2.0 because they need to give you what they call an app ID, which is a specific number relating to the game that you're creating that you need to put into their build of the engine, which then enables DLSS 2.0. But you need to get that from a contact at NVIDIA. So you need to reach out to NVIDIA, say, listen, I'd like to to try DLSS 2.0 uh, and if they agree then they give you this app ID. <laughs> you chose number 666. <laughs> I'm not going to mention anything about that. So yes, once you have this this number you are entered into a special spot inside of the project settings and you can then enable DLSS 2.0 and it is very cool I have to admit. It uh, does work really well. And we will be using that build of the that fork of the engine. So, uh, as always, if you do miss the live streams, remember you can always catch up and watch the streams at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch page. I hope you guys had a good weekend, and I hope you had a good weekend too, Smurf. Um, thanks for the help you gave in the Discord server as well. Remember, guys and girls, if you haven't joined the Build Us 3D Discord, you can click the link I've just popped into chat. Um, why is my name pink? Sorry, I'm just looking at my my, my name inside of a Streamlabs chatbot and it's pink. I don't know why it's pink. Anyway, nothing wrong with pink. <laughs> I'm just curious why it's turned pink. And Edo, it's good to see you, Edo. How are you? Did you have a good weekend, buddy? Uh, so yes, Murph, thanks for uh, 
that information on what were we talking about here? Maya and target files, it looks like. Transparency. Your name is orange for you, Smurfberry. Yeah, it's pink in my chat. I don't know. It's weird. Weird. Never used to be pink. It used to be yellow, I think. Anyway, this is Streamlabs chatbot that I'm using. I don't use Twitch chat. I use Streamlabs because it gives, uh, I can set up all of my pop-ups and stuff through uh, through the chatbot. That's why I don't know when one of you guys wants me to say I love you. Uh, if you use your channel points, I don't know who you are. <laughs> you have to tell me. Edo Crazy Man says, Crazy Man, uh, Edo says, I changed my entire pipeline. Do tell, Edo. What did you do? XYZ Textures, Mari and Marmoset is the path to salvation. XYZ Textures, I'm not familiar. Can you explain? What is that? Uh, Mari and Marmoset, of course I know. Mari I love. We're going to be using Substance Painter to finish off this uh, grate for the fireplace before we jump into the engine, but um, I do like Mari. Praise be to Marmoset, Smurfberry says. <laughs> Yes, Mum sets a very good program. I, I don't actually use it. If I want to do beauty renders, I do them in Max, and I generally use V-Ray. But Mum um, sets a very good program, very cool program. I really should install the new version and check it out. Cause it's been a while since I looked at Mari. It was years ago. Oh, sorry, not Mari. <laughs> Mum set. <laughs> All these M's. Um, I really should check out version three. I think they're up to now. Mum set. Mm, very loves Mum set. <laughs> Look, and it is very good. If you just want to do some um, beauty renders on the, the stuff that you're making in Creative Mama sets a great way to do it, for sure. All right, so, uh, yes, into Max. Let's have a look here. So, yeah, the, gr the great. This is what we need to texture up. It's, I forgot to do it. I knew I needed it. We, we may need a table as well, <laughs> but we'll wait till we jump into Unreal. We start setting the room up and then I can decide if I need a table, if I need to make it and texture it. We'll go from there. Uh, Ido says, I'm not going to link the site, but if you just Google XYZ textures, it's like photorealistic maps that you can project on characters. Oh, I'm going to check it out now. XYZ textures. So anyone new to my channel, you want to know more about me and what I do and links to my social media, you can go to phildoes3d.com. So just my Twitch username with a .com on the end. So XYZ Textures. Whoops. Phil can't type. Texturing XYZ high-end content for artists. Mm, nice model. Very nice model, actually. Nice texture work. I, I see. I, I don't. I'm not familiar with it because I'm not a, a, a character artist. I'm an environment, hard surface type guy. So that's probably why I haven't heard of it before. It does look very cool though. Really nice work. Nice textures. Nice models as well. It's very cool. Yeah, beautiful modeling work. Well, there you go guys if you're a character artist you should obviously check this out because it does look very cool very 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 cool nice let's just check the gallery out really quick that's that's amazing actually this one amazing I'm assuming that's the model and not the guy that made the model. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, great looking style. There you go. Check that out. Actually, I will pop the link in Twitch chat right now just for anyone that wants to check it out. But easy enough to find by doing a Google search. Uh, so, yes, we're going to texture up the grate and then we're going to jump into the Unreal Engine. Memory says, is it not suitable for work? <laughs> Edo says, and I exclusively use Houdini for my UVs now. Well, there you go. I use uh, Ryzen UV to do my UVing. 
but you don't need a third-party program. You can do it all inside of uh, whatever 3D program you use, general. And that includes Blender, which is completely free. You can't get better than free. We love free. Um, now, I think I've already exported this out, so I can jump straight into Substance Painter, create a new project. I have UV mapped it and I have vertex colored it. So we can jump straight into texturing. Yep, fire, pra blah, 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 fire place grill. Uh, 1024 will be plenty big enough. And let us bake out our map. Uh, he just says, but Houdini is the best. <laughs> I've seen the light. I actually have not tried Houdini or anything, actually, so I should check it out. You can't go back to... Have you used Ryzen, Edo? Do you still prefer Houdini to Ryzen? So I found Ryzen to be the best uh, UV mapping program I've come across. It is a third-party program, though. I mean, like I said, you don't need... You can do all your UV mapping in your 3D program. It's just if you want to speed up your workflow... I do recommend using Ryzen. It is very good. Okay, let's jump into our materials and start texturing this grater. Even Max's built-in tools are very good as well. They're actually, Max's built-in tools are based on an older version of Ryzen because Autodesk purchased the right to integrate the algorithm that Ryzen uses, or one of them. Uh, into Max's UV layout tools years ago, so. Uh, but it's not the same as Ryzen UV now. The new version of Ryzen has been updated since Max's version. And the algorithms they use to do the UV mapping are much better. Um, Ido says, well, yes, I was going to swap to Ryzen, but my mentor showed me a Houdini way. Cool. Use what works for you. Uh, let's start with this one, I think. Let's um, actually, just before we do that, let's remove the blank layer from the bottom that uh, Substance creates by default. And I just want to find a, uh, a plain metal texture before I start putting stuff on top of it. What about this one? That should work. Let's just uh, check a couple of things. Now these, these are smart materials, so they've got multiple layers to them. So I just need to go through and find the layer I'm after. This should be all right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that gold we just added to the top of that stack. And, 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 what are we doing? Um, I'm going to mask it with color selection and I'm going to pick, oh, wow. Again, when I did the bake out, it defaults the IDs to material color and I want vertex color. Let's just bake that again. I always, it's a recent change they've made and I always, always forget. Uh, so let's pick that color now. Uh, Ido says, I'm also starting my immigration to, Ca oh cool, to Canada. Nice. Where are you located at the moment, Ido? Are you in the US or are you in Europe? Where are you? I keep, I can't remember. Canada's nice, actually. I like. I wouldn't mind living in Canada either. It reminds me a lot of where I live here in Australia and Melbourne. Supposed to be very similar. You're in the US, okay. Nice. So you're going to make the big move to Canada. Whereabouts in Canada? Anywhere in particular? Uh, yeah. So I wouldn't mind living in Canada because, like I said, it does. It's supposed to be very similar to Melbourne, where I live now. 
That's cool. Uh, are you? Uh, do you have um, work lined up, or are you just doing the immigration thing because you want to live in Canada, and then you're going to organise the, the work stuff? There's a big gaming scene in Canada as well, like games companies, things like that. Big film industry, of course, as well. Well, effects for films and stuff. I know a few people that have worked in Canada. Well, most of the most of the guys that I know that work in the industry tend to move around quite a bit. So they'll work in the US for a while, then they'll work in London for a while, then they'll go to work in Canada for a while. And so they travel around the world, which is great if that's what you like to do. Uh, Ido says, well, I went for the uh, Quebec fast immigration since our field is specific and they need artists. Yes, well, that's another good thing about working in the um, design industry, particularly if you do 3D sort of work. It is a specialised field. Uh, it's pretty much always in demand. So you can get companies to sponsor you to, if you want to travel the world and, and experience different countries, it's a good field to get into. And Quebec, I've heard good things about Quebec. Ido says, uh, I'm trying to get a job there, but it's rough getting sponsored. That's just it. The best way to actually do it is to actually get the company, a company to sponsor you to go to the country. So what that means basically is they'll interview you if they like your work and they want to hire you, then they'll sponsor you to actually move there. Depending on how badly they want you to, they'll pay for your relocation as well. So. That does mean, though, that uh, while you're being sponsored by that com company, you can't leave that company. Uh, not not until maybe your immigration's all been sorted out, then you're probably free to move. But just bear that in mind. If, if you're being sponsored by a company to go and work in another country, you're generally pretty much tied to that company, at least until your immigration is sorted. So pick a good company. <laughs> I've known a few people that have uh, been caught by that before. What's this new message? Link, Link3707, thank you for following the channel. I do appreciate it. When you follow my Twitch page, so thank you, Link. Welcome to Phil Does 3D. Uh, okay, let's keep going here. There's just a few other bits and pieces we need to add to this grill, and then we can jump straight into the Unreal Engine. Uh, so go through there. Uh, what a this board up. Mm, let's have a look here and see what this gold looks like. Uh, it's pretty too similar to what I just added, so I'm just going to remove that. Let's have a look at this one. This one's not bad. Let's um, mask with color selection to maybe this bit. Um, we could leave that the rusty wrought iron, but I'll just see if there's another uh, material here that might look cool. I told you it wouldn't take us very long to texture this up. Let's mask this to the uh, border. That's all well and good, but let us group these together. wait for substance to catch up here uh, and let's just throw a smart mask over everything now let's try the dirt soft edges one so I've applied the mask to the group and now I'm masking the group with the underlying uh, just plain dirty rusty metal. Just to knock it back a little bit so it's not quite so um, new looking, it's a little bit more worn and old. We don't have to get too carried away, this is just a grate that's going in front of the fireplace.
But uh, just keep trying, Edo. I mean, it, there's a lot of different uh, companies to work for in, in Canada, so I'm sure you'll find one that will sponsor you. Okay, let's make a quick save of this project and export the textures. I'm going to call this one Fireplace Grill. And I'm just going to rename this to Fireplace Grill and not great, so I don't get confused. And let's export the textures. Uh, make sure in the right folder. Models. Study chosen fireplace. And we're going to be exporting at 1K. Yes, good. Alrighty. I don't actually think we need Substance Painter now, so I'm just going to close Substance completely down. Um, we've got the grill, but what I need to do is I need to export the grill and this uh, decorative piece here is going to be glass. So I'll create a glass shader inside of Unreal for that. For the bit in between the little squares. But we need to attach both of them together before I and then do another export. So I'm just going to do an attach like that and export the grill. Just before I do an export, actually, I'm just going to uh, do a reset on the X form just to bake in any scaling changes I've made to the model. Uh, I won't change the pivot point. No, it can stay where it is. We're going to export that to the fireplace folder and we're calling it fireplace grill underscore cond for condense. And let's just save the file. I won't close Max down just in case I need to jump back into it. I'm going to jump into Unreal now, and again, I'm not using the standard um, install of the Unreal Engine. I'm using a, 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 a fork of the Unreal Engine. So anytime you use a fork of the engine, you do have to compile it yourself. So you can jump on GitHub, download the fork, and then use Visual Studio uh, to compile. As an example, you don't need to use Visual Studio, but I use Visual Studio to do a compile of the fork of the engine can take a little while depending on what changes were made to the engine and how fast your PC is and all that sort of jazz. Uh, but you just use Visual Studio. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's not too not too hard. But not as simple as just downloading it through the Epic Games launcher though. Alright, now we're in... I, I've been told I have to stay in this room. I really can't be showing anything else outside of the game. So we're in the study at the moment. I'm just going to turn lit mode off so that we can see what we're doing. Now, th these are the old, um, well, that, that's that's an issue. I'm gonna have to look at the plant popping through the wall, but I'll do that later. So let's just ignore the plant here for the moment. Smurpery says Bethesda plants. That's right. <laughs> Smurpery's having a go at Bethesda in their poor Poor layout and stuff popping through other stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna. Have to, I'm gonna have to move that plant, which could be difficult because I think I did some um, hardware instant static meshing, and if that's the case, then they're all locked together, and which would mean I'm gonna have to. There's a couple of ways I could do it. I can remove one of the plants from the HISM list and re-add it. Uh, anyway, I'll look at that later. Just ignore the plant. The plant will be fixed. Just pretend it's not there. Um, and I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove all of these wall sections and this floor is actually from uh, the dining room. So we created a unique looking floor for here so we don't need it and I don't need these plaster wall sections because we've created a specific wall panelling for this room. So I'm going to remove all this panelling. Mm -hmm. 
just going to leave that piece there because it doesn't have a window. Remember when I was making the panels, I said to you guys, I can't remember if there's a window here, but I knew that there was a door here. There's no window, which is good, but we didn't create a panel piece for above the doorway. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that there for now. We may have to jump back into Max and cut a piece specifically for above the door. So let's just keep removing the old paneling. Uh, I'm also going to remove these columns from this room because this is a tiny room and these columns are really big and heavy. So they really make the room look wrong. You wouldn't generally have columns like that in a tiny room like this. So we're going to remove them as well. Uh, except for the, maybe the two here either side of the door. I may leave those there just again just for now. But the ones in the corners can go. A bit of plaster can go. The ceiling can stay. Edo says, smooth healthy with my skin and marmoset. Uh, we can remove the uh, floor as well. All right. Oh, let's get rid of that one. So now we should be okay to start placing some stuff. So I guess first things first, let's put down the floor. Uh, I did already bring it into Unreal. Looks like it's a little bit big, so let's scale it back. Snapberry says, put the thing on the thing. <laughs> let's just scale this in. Actually, I think it's rotated around the wrong way, so let's rotate it correctly. Angle snap is turned on. Good. Trying to remember, oh, I already remember now. I actually have a piece that goes over between these two tiles. It's like, um, you know, when you have central heating, you have the, the, the grates that are in the floor. Sometimes you have them in the ceiling, but other times they're like this long grate that goes into the floor that the hot air comes out of. I've got a, like a deco grate that will go between those two tile sections here to, to cover it up. The fact that we have two separate meshes here of the floor. Um, I'll put that in in two secs. I'll just get the floor size correct first then. Floor grates are danger. Why are they dangerous, man? Uh, stuff gets dropped in there. Ah, yeah. Yes, that can happen. Uh, you guys know I used to have a cat, a little cat. She died about a year and a half or so ago now. She was very old. She was like over 20 years old. Uh, she used to love sitting on top of the of the grate when the central heating was on. So all you used to see is just this fur ball on the on the, on the grate, and she was tiny, like even fully grown, she would have only been about. She was small. She was always a really tiny. She was like the runt of the litter. So she used to sit on the grate, and yeah, the hot air blowing up. All you would see is like this fur ball, all this fur sticking out everywhere, and yeah, she was very cute. That's what I remember about the heating when uh, the central heating grates. The cat loves sitting on top of them. She couldn't get enough heat. Anything hot, she used to love. It was funny, actually. One day she was sitting on top of my TV and she actually fell asleep on sitting on top of it and she, she must have rolled over or something and she lost her balance and fell down the front of the TV. So she, as she fell, she scratched the front of the television, the glass on the front of the television. I mean, she was okay, you know. Cats tend to, when they fall, land on their feet, so she was fine. Apart from the fact that she scratched up my TV, which I was not too happy about. I would choose to like lying up there though because uh, it used to be nice and warm. The heat coming off the television.
Edo says the big box. Yeah, it was one of the big boxes. I used to have an old Sony. This is in the days before the modern TVs now where they were all, you know, that thick. I used to have a Sony TV, big Sony TV. That was about, the top of it was about that wide. So she used to be able to sit up there. Um, yeah. But those TVs are long gone. We don't use them anymore. It's all thin flat screen stuff now. Just got to try and work out how I'm going to tackle this. Because you'll notice that my edging here is not correct. It's okay through here, but this wall, and it's because I'm edging it right up against uh, that tile. So I think what I need to do is scale it in a little bit. And uh, so now our edging is correct, but we have this gap. Let me let me just. I, I really shouldn't be leaving this room. I'm just going to point the camera down. Uh, I'm going to keep it in unlit mode anyway. I'm just going to jump out so I can see. Okay, what I've done over here, and I think I'll do the same thing. I'm going to use this decorative mosaic tile as opposed to using one of the grates which is what I've used upstairs in some of the rooms this is the grate I'm talking about here I could either use the grate or I could use this tiled mosaic and I think I might I might go with the tiled mosaic I think because I've done I've used it for the other rooms off of this main hallway anyway so the good old days Edo says yep that's right the good old days it's, it's terrible though, really, you know, when you think about it, how quickly technology changes, how often we upgrade our technology, and then it just all gets sent to the rubbish tip. It's just really bad for the planet. We just waste resources so much. Perfectly, like my, my, my Sony TV was perfectly fine when I replaced it with the, uh, I used to have a plasma TV after that, now I've replaced that with uh, an LCD, but um, yeah seems we waste electronics it's just because of the, everything gets obsolete so quickly and then it just gets thrown away regardless of whether there's anything wrong with it or not i'm just going to duplicate that uh, mosaic tile and we're going to take it over to the study and again the reason i'm doing this is because i'm not really supposed to be leaving the room i'm working in and the guys at the game studio will get very angry with me if I show too much of, uh, of the game. Let's move that in there and go back in that room. There we go. Let's rotate it around. Um, and I think I'm going to rotate it this way. Might just scale it in a little bit as well. And we're just going to move it there like that. Actually, I might move it in so it's... Again, let me just double check how... I've Done, yeah. I'm going to move it in so that just the edge is showing on the outside of the door. I think I might have scaled it in a bit too much. Let's just make it a little bit wider. That should be good. Okay. And now our floor looks nice and even, the border around the edge. That's good. All right, now let's work, look at the uh, paneling for the walls. Again, ignore the plant. 
Uh, I need to import the other wall sections. I've only got one of them in at the moment. Let me just open that up and pull it over because it's going to open on my second screen. So that's our wall panelling. Uh, we have a couple of other pieces we need to bring in, so let's do that. So import study walls. We've already exported them. So this is the study wall. We need the study wall for the fireplace. And I'm going to be reusing the same texture on all of these pieces. So uh, let's just open that up or around the back. So let's go to the front. And we're just going to copy the same material. Over here. And this is the piece that goes over the fireplace with that hidden uh, cupboard. And the cutout for the fireplace there. Uh, let's just do a save on that. And as I do this, I'm just going to go through and make sure that my lotting is correct on everything. And uh, I'm using um, distance field shadows as well. So I have to make sure that my distance field shadow setting, which is uh, here, is correct. I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, distance field shadows are good to give you nice soft shadows in the engine. They do use more memory though. Uh, and th this multiplier here is how much more memory it uses. And it shows you just up here how much memory the shadow map is using at the moment. For this asset, it's using 0.27 of a megabyte. So. Uh, I need to make sure that that's correct. This one's using 0.31, so that's fine. Uh, I just want to also check the lotting here. So we do a 50% reduction on the initial poly value, and then we're doing 0.55 and 0.41. So we're going to do a 50% reduction on the lot, uh, on, the, on the triangle count. And then we're going to go custom for our lotting. And we're going to go to three lot levels. Not eight lot levels, three lot levels. There we go. Just wait for that. I'm going to turn off auto compute lot distance because I want to set it by hand. And we're going to go 0 0.55 and 0 0.41. Uh, because I actually determined when I brought the other piece in that they were the best values for the asset. Generally, the Unreal Engine works it out okay on its own, but not always. So let's save that. Let's bring in the next piece. Um, so it's going to be study wall small. Smurfberry says, this is a nice looking bathroom. That's right. With a gold toilet, Smurfberry. A solid gold toilet. Well, yeah. The, the, the toilet lid and the seat are gold. Solid gold. Because that's what you guys wanted. You wanted a solid gold toilet. So you got a solid gold toilet. Let's copy the, um, the shader. That's the narrow piece. But again, we've got to make sure we do a 50% reduction on the poly. Check our memory for our distance field shadows. That's okay, 0.19. And change our lotting. It'll be interesting to see working with our UE5 next year when they release it. Now the poly counts are not so much of an issue how that works. Just not having to do lotting would be nice. Regardless of how many polys you can use, just not having to lot an object would be nice. Not that it's difficult. Unreal make it very easy, but it's just an extra step that's a pain. Uh, where am I? What's going on? Triangles. Custom, good. Triangles, good. We 
doing three LOD levels and I'm going to make it 0 0.55 and 0 0.41. That's good. Let's move on to the next piece, which will be study wall small. Copy, paste. Custom lot levels, reduction of 50% on the tries. Two point point two seven on the uh, distance build shadows is okay. Number of blood levels is three. And turn off auto lot distance. Zero point five five. And 0 0.41. No, it's okay, let's save that. Alright, so that should be all of the study wall sections, uh, with the exception of we may have to create one for above the door. So we'll come to that in a minute. Let's see now. Uh, study wall mesh, let's bring that in. It's going to be huge, but that's okay. Let's start by rotating it. Now we can scale it. Let's move it, I think. I believe this one goes over here in this corner. I believe. <gasps> Android Lust, thank you for the sub. But you've been sub for 29 months, Android Lust. That's incredibly good of you, and I do appreciate the subscription. So thank you, Android Lust, for subscribing. For 29 months, you are awesome. I don't know if Android Lust is in the chat though. <laughs> and there he is, it's crazy. It is crazy. It's good to see you, Android Lust, too. 29 months, man. I've been streaming on Twitch for quite a while, it would seem. And you've been a subscriber for ages. Ages and ages. And I do appreciate it. So thank you, Android Lust. I do appreciate it when you guys uh, sub to the channel. You just got in, okay. Oh, you mean you just got in before your sub streak finished? Is that what you're talking about? Did you have a good weekend? I hope you had a good weekend. I hope all you guys and girls are staying safe out there as well with COVID-19 going around. Oh, we can't say that. We have to say human malware. That's it. My, my, my video on YouTube now will be flagged when I upload it. Now I've gone and done it. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to, first of all, make sure that the scaling on this is correct. And I believe it is. I'm going to move it over just a touch. Android Lost says weekend was cool. Too bad the human malware is on the rise again. Yeah, it, yeah, it's on the rise in the state that I live in, in Australia as well. Like, um, Australia has like seven states in the country to make up the country. Uh, and there are two states at the moment, one where I live and Victoria and New South Wales that are still having numbers increasing. And the state that I live in, Victoria, just had the biggest increase in numbers overnight. So they're, they're afraid the second wave might be starting, which they expected. I mean, they were, they were saying that the, the odds of uh, every country having a second wave are quite, quite great. Like it's happening in China, I think, as well at the moment as well. So. It's going to be with us for a while, I'm afraid. So that's why you must always keep still, keep washing your hands, guys. Wear a mask if you go outside. All those sorts of things, because uh, it hasn't gone anywhere, and it's going to take a while until it does. It's probably we're probably not going to get completely rid of it until they have a vaccine, and that could take years. So. <laughs> Just bear that in mind. Stick to, you know, all of the things you're supposed to be doing. 
Okay, yeah. Now, again, we're going to be ignoring this plant. I'm just going to see. Yeah, okay, good. It's not part of our ahism, I don't think. No. So I can probably move that, but I'll do that after the stream because I'm going to have to jump outside. I actually think the pot that it sits in is a hardware instance, so that could cause a problem. Man, my advice to anyone, if you're making a game and you want to use hardware instant static meshes, don't do it until you've got everything else set up and sorted in the game. Because once you create them, particularly if you make, a, a, as you're supposed to do, if you, if you select a lot of the same, the same asset to make it into a hardware instance, uh, you can't move them. Once you've actually made that hardware instance, if you try and move one part of Say you've got 10 meshes, 10 pots, all part of the one hardware instance. You can't just move one of the pots, it moves them all as part of a group. So just bear that in mind. My advice is don't do, don't do hardware instancing until you're toward the end of your game. I mean, it's, it's no big deal. All it means is I, I'll have to delete that, hard, that one from that hardware instance and replace the uh, pot separately and then create a new hardware instance later. But I won't be doing that until the end of the uh, project, until the game is, until this building is finished, in case I want to change anything. Live and learn. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, ignore the plant, I'll fix that at a later date. It won't be sticking through the wall. Uh, the next one will be the study wall small, which is over on this side. So what I need to do though, is I just need to check the scale value here so I can set it to all the same on all of their pieces. And that way, hopefully they should all fit. Fingers crossed. So this one, let's rotate it, scale it. Move it. It actually looks longer. Why is that? No, no, it's okay. Let's move it back. Good, and again, I'm just going to make sure it's um, pushed back into the wall correctly. There we go. Alright, that wall is okay. This wall now, so we need to copy this one. And again, the, the advantage of me copying this, reusing the same mesh is for that hardware instant static meshing. Uh, basically, what when I when I turn all of these wall sections into a, a, a hism, it'll only read, be read into memory once, and then the the mesh will be placed using the GPU. So it, it just it saves on try count and texture memory and speed. If we can reuse meshes as much as possible. But don't do that. I'm not going to be doing that until like way toward the end. Once I've got all of the building pretty much done, then I'll turn these into hardware uh, instances. Uh, Ido says, let me see the LODs. Let me see them LODs. You want to see the LODs? I just showed you the LODs, dude. <laughs> okay, so that, that's the first LOD level there. Once we move out to Here we get to the second lot, and then the, finally the third lot is when we move out to here. And that's basically I, I, I wanted to do the lotting by hand as opposed to letting Unreal do it because I want to make sure when we're in the room that uh, the, the paneling is not being lotted just because I don't want to risk any pop in hap happening. So I've made the lotting so that once I'm like when we get out to here is when the second lot level pops in. And I know that we'll be outside the room when that's happening. So. You were playing a game? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. They're the LOD levels. Three LOD levels, which I generally find is probably 
enough. Um, it's enough because the way that we're designed a game is there. there's an occlusion box that sits over the entire interior of the building. So when you're outside, everything inside the building is being culled anyway. So three lot levels is generally a plenty for when people are will be playing inside the building because once you exit the building, then there's a, a culling box around the entire interior, which removes all of the meshes so to, to help performance. So I don't need to worry about going to like 10 lot levels because maybe you're up on the hill overlooking the building sort of thing because everything is going to be culled anyway uh, using a, a culling volume. Let's make sure we've lined this up correctly. Make sure it's back against the wall. It is, but not going into the wall. No, good. Okay, let's duplicate that piece. Now that's interesting. We actually created a thin piece uh, because I thought we needed it. And we're going to use it for the fireplace anyway, so it's not too big a deal. You love optimizing, Edo? Well, optimizing is good. Uh, you know, it's, it's the way to go, for sure. You want to optimize your stuff. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we have that piece there, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe this piece here. Yeah, we may have to scale it up just a little bit, but I think it should fit. So let's uh, duplicate this piece. So we can reuse as many pieces as possible. Let's rotate it around. No, don't do that. This actually, this wall section is a lot bigger than I thought. One of these pieces would probably fit better. So I'm just going to remove that and we'll duplicate one of these. It was tricksy it was. Much bigger than I thought it would be. And again, this almost fits, but I am going to have to scale it out just, just, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. Edo, thank you for the sub. Edo, you are awesome as well. I do appreciate that. So thank you, Edo and Android Lust for the sub to the channel. I do appreciate it. <laughs> That's sub hype. I still actually, I don't think I've created a sub hype. Uh, emote, I really should do that. Or even a pop-up. So, it should be good. Now, if there's anything that I'm noticing here, no, it should be all right. Yeah, no, it should be all right. We are getting a double uh, line here, which is where the two pieces of the thing meet up. Like we're getting a double join, but that's okay. It's in the middle of the wall because we've got single ones through here and single ones through here. Um, I don't think it looks odd though, having a double one in the middle of the wall. Okay, let's move to this wall. So for this wall, Let's bring in the fireplace piece, which is this one. Again, I'm just going to, I don't like looking at the back of it there. I don't know if you can see it, but because we're using one-sided polygons to save on poly count, it's see-through. So I'm just going to edit my thumbnails and rotate that around so I can see it a little bit better. Same with these ones. So let's bring the fireplace in. Well, the fireplace paneling. 
Uh, we're going to do a scale the same. Let's move it up. So we need to pull forward because we have to make allowances for the uh, chimney that sits behind the fireplace. Okay, now I'm going to take, I think we'll take the narrow piece, scale it. When, when I, uh, whenever I'm putting a new room together, I always like to start with the floor and the walls and the ceiling. After that, I do the lighting. After that, I generally do anything like um, curtains before I start putting furniture actually in the room. So I found that's sort of the best way to work. Uh, if you start with, um, start with the walls and the floor. This needs to be rotated 180 degrees. Because again, we're, we're using one-sided polys, so let's move it up. Bring it in. Make sure we're right up against the wall. Uh, Yuri says builders do it that way too, that's right. It's good to see you, Euro. How have you been? Did you have a good weekend? Yes, that is the way builders do it, and they do it for that way for a reason. It's just easier if you um, start with the walls on the floor instead of thinking I'll just start putting furniture in and then I'll do the walls. Do it the way a building would be built. Floors, walls, curtains, then furniture. Uh, generally, Floors, walls, curtains, and light fittings, then furniture. That's the way I do it. It's the best way I've found to do it. Um, now, I'm just going to probably pull this forward a little bit. I need to make an allowance for the panelling that goes here. So we'll just... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up at the front, then we'll line it up at the back. I think that's a better way to go. Let's just make the, sure these are lined up correctly. And we can duplicate that piece for the other side. We'll just rotate it 180 degrees. Pull it in a little bit more. That's good. Now I'm just going to sort of line this fireplace piece up around the middle of the wall. And we need to find some pieces to go here and here. Um, Just worried this piece might be a bit too narrow. Actually, I can copy this one. Let's rotate it. Oh, Yuri says, yeah, it was fine. Didn't do anything spectacular though. That's okay. I threw my mouse mat in the wash today came out looking like brand new. Actually, I, I have to do mine. I've got one of those razor, one of those big razor mouse mats. <clears throat> and I'm just not sure how I should be cleaning it. So can they go in the washing machine, do you know? <laughs> just don't know. It needs to be cleaned though. 
Oh, Edo says, my man Euro. <laughs> so yeah, I've got one as well and uh, I need to clean it, but I'm just worried. About, I just don't know whether I can put it in the, how I'm supposed to wash the thing. Edo says you can wash them, but I don't want to wait for it to air dry. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, Euro says anything warmer than it, then it shags the rubber. This what I, that's what I was worried about because it does have a rubber base. And uh, I've seen online people have like tried to wash them and had all sorts of problems, like with it not laying flat anymore and getting warped and all that sort of stuff. So I just wasn't sure how I was supposed to wash it. I mean, I love the mouse mat, but yeah, they get dirty quick. Now I'm just trying to decide the best way to tackle this wall. Um, Cause I really think this piece is going to be too big. I could be wrong. Let's, let's have a look. I've been wrong before. Wouldn't be the first time. Let's duplicate this piece for the other wall and let me see if it fits or not. Because there's a couple of different ways I could tackle it. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. Nero says I put mine in a 40 degree C mixed fabric wash and air dry. I might, I might like, <coughs> instead of tempting fate, I might try and just do a hand wash and see how that goes. Yeah, I thought it was going to be too big, but there is a couple of different ways we can go here. Uh, Smurfery says, I'm just letting my mouse slowly dig a hole through my desk. Haven't used my mouse pad in years. Uh, Android Lust says, I never threw mine in the washer. Normally I just hand wash it and uh, swap it with a spare until it dries. I don't think I've got a spare. Uh, but I could, I probably don't even need the mouse pad. Like my, my desk is white. So I, the, the mouse will work directly on the desk anyway. But I, I like having the mouse pad there because number one, when, when I use my mouse, my, my wrist is resting on the mouse pad and not on a cold desk. Uh, and I think that you get better re resolution, better pick up on the mouse um, laser if it's actually on mouse pad. At least that's what I've been led to believe. <laughs> that's what all the software says when you're doing a calibration. Um, but yeah, the mouse pad gets dirty. It really needs to be cleaned. And I might try doing it by hand just, just to be on the safe side because I've seen pictures on the internet of um, horrible looking mouse pads that people have tried to wash. So yeah, there's a couple of ways we can tackle this. Again, ignore the ignore the plant. Um, needs to come forward a little bit more. And I may do it this way instead of the other way. So what I'm doing here is I've got a really big piece, which you can see is actually intersecting behind the fireplace. Uh, I could do it that way, or I could do it this way where I take three of these narrow pieces and duplicate them. And again, we're going to be turning these into hardware instance meshes anyway. So having an extra three is no big deal. It's not going to matter as opposed to one because it's going to be a hardware instance. I just need to, if I, if I do it this way, I have to make sure it's not wider than the gap here because I don't want that intersecting into the fireplace, which it shouldn't finishes just outside of the edge, which is good. Uh, and even width wise here, we're, we're almost even. So that should be fine as well. As opposed to going three wide of the smaller ones. Yeah, we'll do it that way. So let's duplicate this piece. Move that over. Uh, 
Uh, Yuri says, I'm going to get one of those huge mats that covers the whole desk. The the razor ones, like, yeah, they, they can be huge, it, particularly the ones that you buy that are really long that you can put underneath your keyboard as well. Uh, Yuri says, they probably washed it too hot. Just make sure it's 40 degrees Celsius or less. Yeah, I, I will. I'm going to have to give it a go because it really needs a wash. I'm looking at it now. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. I mean, it's not terrible, terrible, but you can tell it needs a wash. The only problem is it's sort of sitting, I've, I've got my two screens here and the screen on my stream PC is actually sitting on a monitor arm, but these two are just sitting on the on the uh, stands that came with the monitors. And the one on this side where my mouse pad is, half of it is actually underneath of the stand of the monitor because it's so big, I, I had to put half of it under the uh, monitor stand. So taking it out is going to be a pain. It's got to be done though, it's disgusting. Okay, let's have a look here. So for this little corner here, I think we could probably get away with that narrow piece. Uh, I may have to scale it up a little bit. Did, where, did I not use that narrow piece anywhere else? Really? <laughs> did I not use it anywhere else? <sighs> no. No. No, I did not use it anywhere else. All right. Uh, Ido says, I have the long HyperX one. Oh, yep, I know the one. I'm debating getting a Cintiq. Oh, Cintiq would be sweet. What's the debate? If you can afford one, get one. Uh, it really, I guess, depends on the sort of work you do too, whether it's going to be useful for you, a Cintiq. Hundred eighty. Let's move it up. And move it into this corner now. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit small, so... We may have to put two in this corner. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Yeah, I think... There's a couple of things I can do here. I can either use two, we're, we're, or I can scale this one up, but it is going to affect the size of our little squares. And if we go to, if we scale it too wide, then people will notice the difference. Because at the moment, all of our squares are, very, are all even. So, um, if I move that right into the corner, I think a better way to go here will be to duplicate it instead of trying to scale it. So I'm going to duplicate this piece again. And we can move it there. I think that's a better way to go. It keeps everything nice and even. Cool. Let's do a quick save because, you know, we haven't done one, so... Gives me a chance to have a coffee. And more coffee. It's taken a while. Good. Uh, now, I just want to make a, a small change here to the floor. You'll notice now we put our wall sections in. It's covering up uh, a lot of our floor so I'm just going to make uh, to scale the floor in a little bit um, just so we can see the green tile a bit more Should be good. All right. Uh, now let's let's put a light in the middle of the ceiling. So let's move that um, that hideous but period light that we created. 
Let's scale it up. I actually think I might have uh, scaled it non-uniformly, so I'm just going to undo that and we'll do that again. There we go. <coughs> Pardon me. And we're going to put it around about the middle of the ceiling. Let me check the size. Uh, Yuri says, I got an XP pen the other week. It's decent for a drawing tablet. Uh, I think the only thing I'm going to get for my PC between now and September, October is more RAM. Bump it up to 64 gig. Sweet. 64 gigabytes of RAM. Nice. Um, I think uh, I'm pretty... I, I use 32 gig in my machine here. It's. I found that's... Okay, I've not run out of memory. Not that I'm aware of. And I do photogrammetry stuff, so I've generally found 32. I wouldn't, I probably, if you want to do photogrammetry, I wouldn't say less than 32. But 32 has, has seen me pretty well. Uh, and I actually couldn't up, upgrade my RAM because I'm using a kit uh, and of four RAM slots that are um, eight gigabytes each. And if I was to, eight, eight, six, yeah. So if I was to upgrade my RAM, I'd, I'd, I'd lose, and the advantage of buying a kit is they're all sort of like rated the same, which is what you really should do for your RAM. Try and make sure it's all rated at the same speed and all that sort of jazz. So I'd lose, I had to lose 16 gig of my four slot kit to get another two slot kit to up it to 64 gig. And yeah, I, I haven't found a need for it at the moment. But. But the only other thing I need to upgrade actually is I need to buy another uh, external hard drive for backup. <laughs> I never, uh, you guys see, I, I, I run a lot, of, a lot of hard drives on my computer, but I still need more. I need more backup storage. Yeah, because file sizes are just huge now. So um, th that's what I need to purchase is a, an external hard drive, a USB C hard drive for backup, for project backup work. So. Android Lust says that's what I want. I have 16 gig at the moment. Yep, I recommend 32 gig. 32 gig is like the sweet spot if you do a lot of dev work. More is always better. Don't get me wrong. If you can afford it, get 64 gig. But 32 gig, I found pretty much serves me well. Uh, but 16 gig, if, if you're not doing a lot of development stuff, is fine. More than fine if all you're doing is playing games and all that sort of jazz. 8 to 16 gig is fine. But if you're doing dev stuff, 32 gig. And if you can afford more, 64 gig is good. Uh, Euro says, I have two 16 gigs. I'll get the same kit again. Yeah, I should have gone that route. I bought four. I bought a kit of four 8 gigs. Um, I should have bought a kit of two 16 gigs. But I don't think... I think when I bought my RAM, that was all I had in stock. And I wanted it now, so I didn't want to wait. Uh, so I think that's why I went with a, a four a four slot, a four stick kit of 8 gig. Miss Smurfrey says, "I oh, look at Mr. Fancy Pants and his only half full hard drives. <laughs> and, well, some of them are more than half full. And I don't like, I don't, it freaks me out when I see, you know, when it goes red, when it starts to get toward the very, when you start to fill up your hard drive uh, in Windows, it turns the bar red. That freaks me out. So I always want to make sure I've, that never happens. It happened to me the other day, actually, on my backup drive. So I had to go through my backup drive and remove a lot of stuff. Actually, I had to consolidate because I do incremental backups every day. I had to consolidate my incrementals because I had like 30 incremental backups for my C drive, my E drive, my D drive. Uh, it was filling up my backup drive, so. <laughs> Link. Link says, buy a 6 bay NAS. That's the way to go. Yep, a NAS drive is the way to go. Um, and I really should because I do a lot of work for both the Archbiz Studio and for the Game Studio. 
So I have a lot of project work that needs to be backed up because the studios will not be happy if I say, I'm sorry, but I lost all my work and I have to redo it all again. It's going to take six months. Uh, and that's is certainly the way to go. Second favorite says one terabyte SSD are becoming inexpensive these days. Yes, they are. Uh, I, I have an NVMe for my C drive, an NVMe SSD, which is very cool. Um, and they're getting a lot cheaper now, the, the large capacities of those. But they're still not big enough. Like you can buy four terabyte SSDs, but they cost $600, at least in Australia. Um, whereas I can buy a four terabyte hard drive for about $200. And because I'm only using it for backup, I don't really need the speed of an SSD. But you're right, SSDs are certainly getting cheaper, second favourite. Uh, welcome to Phil Does 3D2. Yura says, the new Star Wars Squadrons game has a recommended spec of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Well, this game you see me working on now, uh, it, we recommend 8 gigabytes to play it. You must have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM in your, in your computer to play this game that, uh, that I'm working on right now. But you can wishlist on Steam. I, I didn't do that spiel this morning. Um, Andrew Nuss says, I have two reds. Nice. Uh, Western Digital, I'm assuming. Two red, red Western Digitals. Sweet. Well, drives in the red. Smurfbury says, don't buy Western Digital reds, though. <laughs> Mercury says Western Digital have been sneaking crappy drives into their product lineup. Yes, they've been they've been trying to uh, sneak in what they call I think SMR drives, which are not as fast as the normal drives. I, I think it's shielded magnetic recording. I think is what it stands for. So it's a, a different format for how they they actually store the data on the drive. And yeah, SMR drives are cheaper for them to manufacture. But they're not very they're not as fast as normal hard drives used to be. So you've got to be careful of that. Not all the Western Digitals though are like that, just some of them. Uh, some of the Seagates are like that too. So you know, don't think going Seagate you'll escape it either because they're the same. Which you are right, Smurfery. Link says uh, and fill it with four to eight terabyte hard drives. Oh, that'd be sweet. Six six bay NAS with uh, eight terabytes each. No, hey. Uh, Euro says need a one terabyte system NVMe to be honest. I I use a uh, a 512 gig uh, NVMe for my C drive, which is and you can see from my space here. I mean I've got a lot of software installed, and I'm still only about halfway through it. So I I, I use the C drive only to install stuff and install Windows, and I I've got a lot of software installed, and I don't have a problem. Um, not saying that I wouldn't like a one terabyte NVMe. That's sweet too. Oh, Smurfbury. Oh, no. Smurfbury's just posted um, in the Discord server. Guys, if you want to join my Discord, the Phil Does 3D Discord, just click that link I popped in chat. Um, there's a gallery where you can show off your work. Uh, there's a tutorials and tips section. Um, there's a place where you can show off your uh, demo reel, your art station, all that sort of stuff. If you want. Um, and if you want to know more about me, you can go to phildoes3d.com. So my Twitch username with a .com on the end. But Smurfer has just popped this, uh, he's showing me his hard drive. Oh no, see that would freak me out, Smurf. That would freak me out. It, when, it, when it gets into the red like that, then I get freaked out. Yeah, no, I couldn't do that. What are you talking about with me and my hard drives? Look at all the ones that you've got. Man, you're just as bad as me. <laughs> In fact, I think you're worse. One, two, three, four. Five, six. You've got six and you've got a USB drive here. I don't have that many. I've got one, two, three, four, five, five with two externals. So we're about the same. <laughs> uh, Euro says DG hates the network disks. Uh, Smurf says unmounted. <laughs> He's typing in Discord. Um. Thank you, Euro. Yes, you can wishlist the game right now on Steam that you see me working on here. I do have to be careful, though, that um, you guys are posting uh, images of your drives. You're not too bad, Edo. You've got three there. <laughs> uh, yes, you can wishlist the, the, the game you see me working on right now in Steam. 
Uh, second favorite says, I did pick up a 10 terabyte Western Digital portable hard drive the other day for 165 bucks. Jeez, that's cheap. Uh, but it was the deal of the day on a website. Yeah, that's 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 amazing value. 10 terabytes for uh, 165 bucks. That's very good value. Should have bought three. <laughs> yes, no, that's good value for sure. Um, Euro says SMR can also break RAID. Yes, it can. That's true. So if you want to raid your hard drives, which generally, if you're running a NAS, you will be doing. SMR, you do not want SMR drives in a NAS. No, 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 no. You need reliability and SMR. Speed and reliability are not great. Uh, Link says SMR drives are fine for back. Well, you again, yeah, for, for backup, they're fine, I guess. Um, just depends on what you're doing with them. But just for regular, I wouldn't put one in my machine, my main machine, and use it as a normal drive. SMR drives are not as fast. For sure. uh, I know because I've got one. I think one of my external Seagates is an SMR, but I use it as a backup drive, so that's, that's cool. Uh, oh no, Link says shielded magnetic recording. Shingled, shingled magnetic recording. I called it shielded, didn't I? Shingled magnetic recording. That's correct, yes. Android Lost says, I don't have Western Digital Reds. I have Windows showing two of my hard drives with a red bar pretty much on my full. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like that. I don't like, oh, Euro, you, Euro, you've got quite a few as well. You guys telling me I've got too many hard drives. You guys have got just as many. The only one that's half decent is Edo. You're just as bad, Euro. Um... Yeah, no, I don't like the red bar. The red bar freaks me out when I see it in Windows. Maybe it's my OCD. I just know that my, my hard drive is nearly full and that freaks me out. And of course, with an SSD drive, you should never fill it completely because then it will start to slow down. You always need to leave like a little bit of, bit of room on the end of it. Don't completely fill an SSD either. If you want to keep it at top speed. He says I need to buy a two terabyte SATA. I actually want to get another four terabyte external for backup, for project backups, specifically just for project backups, for things like this game that we're working on with the game studio and uh, some of my Archbiz work. So, uh, and I, I like to keep multiple backups, so I back up my work drive anyway. Android Lust, you post, oh god, Android Lust, I see the red. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I back up my, I make multiple backups, so I back up my work drive, but then I also back it up to a second hard drive. But now I want to get an, another external drive that I can do the projects, back up the projects on, so I'll have, I'll back it up in at least three different places. Because you know hard drives, you never know when they're going to die. Uh, and the last, the last thing you want is to have a backup that won't, that you can't use, you know? I'm being overcautious, but it's because the studio will not accept, oh, I'm sorry, but um, my, my hard drive crashed and all that work that that client wants is gone and I have to redo it all. I won't be happy at all. I'll sack me. <laughs> Our second favourite says, yeah, it was from uh, Deals. I'm, I'm not dealskinja.com, I'm not familiar with them. They have different stuff every day, but usually have some sort of uh, storage popper. Cool. Well, it's very good value. Uh, my apologies, uh, my apologies, second favourite. Don't post links in my Twitch chat. Only subs can post links in my Twitch chat. If you want to post links, do it on the Discord server. Uh, you're new to the channel, and I do apologise. Uh, Nightbot that does that automatically. My apologies, so second favourite. No, that's that's fine. It's not no, not your fault. I did not tell you. And um, so yeah, guys, if, if you're not a sub to my channel, do not post links in Twitch chat. It's restricted just to subs. But if you do want to post a link to something, whether it's work you're working on or whatever, jump on the Discord server. I can see both because I have Discord open at the same time that Twitch chat is open. So don't think if you're posting in Discord, I won't see it because I do. Uh, and I do want to say sorry to your second favourite for being timed out there by Nightbot. Naughty Nightbot. No, oh, no. Nightbot's very good. It's supposed to. But do be careful. Don't keep posting links. Otherwise, uh, Nightbot will... will he, he, he will keep timing you out longer and longer and longer. 
Yeah, she's making Nightbot mad. That's okay, second favorite. Euro says, I try to keep my spinning rust 50% or less full since it's uh, Peter de Fragging. <laughs> Did you hear the new Windows version 20, 2004? You know, the one that Microsoft released a week or two ago? There's a problem with the defragmenter in the update. So if, you, if you're running Windows 10 2004, like the latest update, be careful of the defragger because apparently it's defragging SSD drives, which should never be defragged. Um, and it's trimming hard drives, which generally should never be trimmed. So generally you trim an SSD and you, you defrag a hard drive. But there's a bug in the new version of Windows where Windows is trying to defrag SSDs and it's trying to trim hard drives. Basically all it's doing though, it's going to be thrashing your SSD and reducing the lifespan of it. So be careful of that. If you're running the new version of Windows, I haven't, up <coughs> pardon me. I haven't updated my machines to the new version of Windows. I did the June update, the security update for Windows 1909, the version before the latest one, and it's broken all my printer. I can't print to anything. Uh, I have a brother printer. So none of my machines, I, can, I can't print to my printer. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you so much for, you know, for testing all of your, um, your, your cumulative updates. Way to go, Microsoft. You get the impression they just don't test anything. These are, uh, this is, um, Android Lust drives. Yeah, no, that would freak me out. Freak me. And you got a few hard drives too. All of you guys having a go at me for having too many hard drives. And you guys are just as bad. <laughs> yeah, no, seeing red freak me out. Freak me out. I can't, can't have that. Can't have that. Uh, I did actually see that you guys posted some stuff in the gallery. I think it was um, Confusion posted a radio. Morak is working on a space shuttle. Uh, and Edo, I think you've been doing some stuff with your eye by the look of it. Uh, I'll show that stuff toward the end of the stream before I close out for the day. Because I love looking at the stuff you guys make. That's why the Discord server is there and that's why the gallery is on the Discord server so you can post links to your work and I can check it out. Uh, second favorite says, I'm a boomer. I thought if I didn't have the WWW part that it would count, it wouldn't count as a no, it knows. It knows. Don't, don't test the bot. The bot knows. <laughs> Mercury says, uh, TLDR, Kinja for hardware deals. I'm not familiar. I've never heard of the site. I'll check it out though. Mercury says, Twitch's chat is dumb. It thinks anything with a period in the middle is a link. <laughs> See, Smurf won't be timed out though because he's a moderator. If he was a moderator, then uh, he probably would have been timed out. Neuro says, I don't use Windows defrag. I use a third party defragger. Do you turn it? My phone is going off. Sorry about that. Do you turn it off though? Because otherwise it automatically does it. It's on a schedule unless you actually disable it, uh, Euro. Smurfery says, uh, I haven't intentionally defragged a drive since Windows XP. I haven't either. I let Windows handle it in the background. Normally it's quite good apart from the new update. Android Lost says, I hate non-3D printers. <laughs> well, I don't have a 3D printer. I just need to print stuff out for work. I just want to be able to print a page of text out for work. And I can't do that because Microsoft broke the printer. Well, they broke the driver with a security update. Uh, they've got to start testing their updates a lot more than they obviously are because it's just getting worse and worse. Come on, Microsoft, you're a huge corporation. Do your job. Test your stuff before you push it out. Uh, Euro says, I wanted to update to 2004, but they haven't given it to me yet. Well, they let me show you that the machine that you see me working on here, uh, when Microsoft first pushed the update out, I got the little notification saying, you know, there's a, an update if you want to install it, hit the download button. Since they broke the printer, this is what happens now. Now I get this. Windows is on its way. We're offering this update to compatible devices, but your device isn't quite ready for it. It's not ready for it because they broke the printer driver. So I can't update this machine. Well, I can if you do it manually, but through Windows Update, it won't. <laughs> because they broke the, broke the printer driver, now they're saying, nope, we're not going to give it to you right now. <laughs> Which is fine. I didn't install it anyway. So I, I, I always wait because I, I, I know Microsoft are always breaking shit. So... <laughs> Uh, Neuro says, I heard the same printer issue that uh, 1909 has is in 2000. Yes, it is. 
So it broke 1909, it's broken 2004 as well. So <laughs> if you install the latest security update for the older version of Windows or the new 2004 May version, and, you, and you've got a, it, it, it's not all printers, but it's a lot of printers. Um, it breaks printing, you can't print anything. It gets sent to the print queue and then disappears before it gets sent to the printer. So <laughs> I don't know what Microsoft have done. Uh, and it's really annoying because I use the printer a lot. I need to print out stuff all the time for work. Now Yuri says, uh, third party one is scheduled, Windows one is disabled. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the defrag. Uh, mostly because the Windows one is so slow. Again, I let Windows handle it in the background. I never really worry about it. My, my hard drives. Ping pong. <laughs> uh, that's why I use Windows for um, built-in, what is it, Defender? Security, you know, virus stuff. It's built into Windows, it's it's fast, it doesn't slow my machine down, because I used to use programs like McAfee and Virus Total and all that sort of stuff, but I used to, they always slow your machine down when they're doing a scan. Uh, Windows Defender doesn't, does, does a pretty good job of catching anything, so I generally stick to Windows built-in stuff. Apart from the backup software, I use Macrium for that, because backing up is really important and I want to trust them. I don't trust Microsoft, put it that way. Um, Smokebury says, my printer has a flatbed scanner, yep, so does mine, built in, and the stupid scanner software has to run as admin or it breaks. <laughs> Thanks, Windows 10. Yeah, mine's the same. I've got a, my printer's also got a, a flatbed scanner built into it, and, and I use the scanner all the time. Thankfully, though, the scanner has not been, I can still use the scanner, I just can't print anything. I'm just going to play with scaling the slide up to a, a little bit. I just want a bit bigger. I want it to be a bit more of a feature in the room. So let's stand at the doorway here and see. And yeah, that should be good. That should be good. I don't think I want it any bigger. Um, second favorite says I'm printing out a bust I sculpted from, from on my 3D printer. It's been going for two days. Must be a large bust, as Euro says. Yeah, I, I, I've never used 3D printers. I'm, I don't really know how fast they're supposed to be or how fast they are. Never used one, so. Um, I would, I'm not saying I wouldn't like one. I'm just saying, yeah, I haven't actually used one. But I'd like to try one. Now, uh, we need to do something about this above the door here. Um... I, I need to replace that with some panelling. So I'm just looking at size-wise how I'm going to tackle this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into Max and I'm going to take one of these panel pieces and create a piece that's cut here. So the top section and the first two rows, that's what we want. And width-wise, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, probably four or wide. So I'm just going to open up the file that contains my wall panelling. Okay, let's just choose a piece of wall panelling. One, two, three, four. This one should be okay. I'm just going to duplicate this piece. And we want to go two, whoops, wrong button, two rows down. So I'm going to go into isolation mode so we're not being distracted by everything else happening on the screen. I'm going to go into flat color so we can see what we're doing. Am I looking around the wrong way? Maybe. Let's have a look. Yes, there we go. I was looking at the wrong side. Uh, so we want to go two rows down. In fact, let me see if I can actually do this this way. Yep, that should be good. We're going to remove that, and that, and that. And we want to go about four wide. One, two, three, four, five. In fact, let me just double check that. We'll make sure. So I'm going to select this, duplicate it, just... Oh, man. Select this. Uh, 
What is going on? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm um, so used to using Max. I'm getting confused. Let's select this, duplicate it. I'm, I'm used to holding the shift key down and dragging to uh, to make a duplicate from Max. So we want it to be... One, two, three, four. We may have to go five wide. One, two, three. Yeah, we'll have to go five wide. Might just make sure I haven't moved anything else that shouldn't be moved. No, I think we're all right. Yeah, no, I think we're all right. So back into max. How are we going? Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. So up to here. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Let us create a slice plane. No. One, two, three, four, five. Let's slice it. Yeah. So that we can, I'm just going to detach these pieces here. So detach you and then select you. Uh, second favorite says it's about 46, 46 centimeters tall, but I'm printing with a fine layer height, so it's taking a bit. Android Lost says I would say two days isn't too bad for that project. Uh, Euro says 2.30 a.m. and the birds are waking up outside. Oh man, Euro. Get some sleep, dude. 2.30 in the morning. My, I can't talk, I generally work tall. I, I've been up till four in the morning recently doing work. Not because I want to, but because I have to. But that's not true. I, I tend to lose track of the time. I just sit in front of the PC, start working. Before I know it, you know, it's four o'clock in the morning and I haven't eaten dinner, sort of thing. It's not good, not healthy. I'm just going to remove that piece. And we're just going to move this piece in to that edge. And just attach them. So one, two, three, four, five. That's cool. Let's attach these pieces together. Here it says it's almost midsummer, four days time. It doesn't get darker than twilight here this time. That, that sounds, I love twilight. It's my favorite time of the day. I think I've mentioned that to you guys before. Twilight is my favorite time of the day. Because it just seems so otherworldly and you know, magical at twilight time. So it's not dark, it's not light, it's that in-between time. That sounds like heaven. Yes, we're in the middle of winter here, so it gets dark early and stays dark till late. I think the, the sun sets at about 5 p.m. now here in Melbourne, where I live, and it doesn't rise until about 8 a.m. <laughs> so dark, 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 dark. Uh, let's export this. We're going to call this one Study Walls. Um, door. So I know it's above the doorway. Let's export it. Uh, just before I do that too, I'm just going to make sure I do a reset on the export just to make sure everything is copacetic. Now we can export it. Uh, we're going to export it into... No, 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 don't do that. Into the study walls. Study walls door. We can jump out of isolation mode. 
I'm just going to save this project just in case because I don't trust Max. Jump back into Unreal. Import our new study walls door. Open it up. And just open this one up so I can copy the material. Uh, we have to again make sure that we do a reduction by 50 on the try count. Check my distance field shadows, that's not too bad. And we're going to go to three load levels. And we are going to turn off auto compute and set it to 0.55. 0.41. Let's double check that. Yep, that's cool. Alright. Let's, where is it? Let's remove that piece from above the door. And pull in the new piece we just created, which is this one. Study wall door. rotate it around the right way which is this way now oh, we're gonna have to scale it to match these ones so 0 0.64 I'm just gonna have to scale it up a little bit I think Yeah. As long as we don't go too big, we should be fine. People won't notice that it's a little bit bigger than the others. Just, um... We have this decorative, actually maybe it's pulled too far back, that might be the problem. Yep, 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 yep. I just need to scale it down a little bit. making sure these are all lining up. And let's... move it back as much as I can. I might just see if I can't move this column forward a little bit. Actually, don't know if I like that double line there, that double column. So I'm just going to overlay those two. 
So we're back to that single column. Remember I said at the beginning of the stream, oh, two in the middle doesn't look out of place. But looking at around around the room now, um, it was looking a little odd. So we overlay them. We can make a, a single column. You won't get Z fighting so long as we shouldn't get Z fighting when we're in the engine. Okay, so we've got the walls in. We've got the ceiling light in. Um, before I put the wall lights on. Uh, I might actually move the fire, bring the fireplace in, I think. So let's bring the fireplace in. Arid Lust says Midsummer reminds me of the Midsummer movie. What's the Midsummer movie? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, so yeah, let's bring the fireplace in. And the fireplace is huge. Let's scale it back. Rotate it around. Look forward, bring it over. Move it back. I think uh, two wall lights either side of the main fireplace could look interesting here. So I'm going to bring in the uh, matching um, sconces that we created for the wall. They match the, the main light up on the ceiling. move them to around about the middle. Check the size. So we have our hidden cabinet here. It's hard to see without the lighting turned on. We're going to have a, ra a deer head up here. So deer head here, so a little bit lower for the two wall lights, I think. And size wise, yeah, that's probably not too bad. Let's duplicate that for the other side. Two. Why is that? Hang on. Hang on. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and a bit. I think the fireplace is not quite in the middle, so I'm going to count. We need to count one, two in from the wall. Two in from the wall, so that's about the right spot but we want to move the entire fireplace over a little bit. So let's do that. So it's even. So we've got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. It needs to come over just a little bit more. One, two, three, four, and it'll touch. One, two, three, four, and a touch. That should be the middle. Let's do a quick save. Yuri says, posted Twilight pick in the Discord. Did you? Uh, it's actually warm outside too. It's cold here. Actually, it's, it's a warmish day. I shouldn't say that. Ah, oh, cool. Nice. Let's have a look at the pictures. 
So this is Twilight where Euro is. Uh, lovely time of day. I love it. What's this one? I love Twilight. What am I looking at here? No, I'm just looking at the reflection here. Is that water? What is that? I thought it was, yeah, I thought it, that's what I'm thinking too. It was a door outside. Oh, it's, it's obviously a reflection in the window. I'm thinking, ah, uh, yeah, I thought it was a door outside and that was like water on the ground with the reflection from the door light. Android Dust says, I don't think I can explain the movie without spoil. Oh, okay. Uh, Yuri says, I just Googled it. Android Dust says, but the trailer makes it seem like it's a horror movie when it's not. The only thing that it has in common with Midsummer or Euro is that it takes place at the same time. Second favorite says, I don't know why it's sideways, but uh, it's the door to my office from the other side of the house. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's popped up sideways either. It's the right way up in Discord. I can see it, but um, yeah. Cool. I love Twilight. Twilight's a beautiful time of day. Android Love says, if it wasn't side, it wasn't sideways for me. Yuri says, it was the right way up for me too. What did I do wrong? It's the right way up in Discord. I can see it. But if I go to copy the link and I try and open it up here in uh, Microsoft Edge, it comes in sideways. Go figure. <laughs> but it's not sideways. Jump on the Discord, guys. If you don't want to see it sideways, you can see it there. Um, Euro says, must have tipped over crossing the Pacific. That's right. Because I remember I live, up the, I, love, I live upside down here at the bottom of the planet. Australia, as you know, we're, we're the land down under and upside down. So. <laughs> um, alrighty. I'll, I'll, putting lit mode on, it's not going to show us much because, you know, we've got no lights in the room yet. <gasps> not really. We've just got fake lights. So we will stay in lit mode, unlit mode rather. We did do a save, didn't we? Yes, good. I want to check out some of the uh, stuff that you guys have posted in the gallery. Nero says, I opened it up in Edge and it tipped it too. It works fine in Firefox. I just want to check out uh, the the old time radio here that um, Confusion posted in the Discord gallery because it looks very sweet. So this is on Confusion's art station. He posted this in the gallery on the Field Us 3D Discord. Lovely texturing. Nice model as well. He's done a really nice job. Very nice. So you guys uh, check out his art station. There's a link he's got on uh, in the Discord, so in the gallery in the Discord. But beautiful work, confusion, lovely. I love the texturing work. I love the modeling work. Looks really cool. Really, really cool. It is nice. I agree. And then uh, Morak is working on a space shuttle. He's still halfway through doing it at the moment. So we're just going to check that out. Nice edge loops going on. And I'm glad you're keeping on working, keep, keep, you're working. <laughs> he was not going to keep working on it because he saw one somebody else had done and he got it and uh, he said he couldn't do it as good. And when that's not the whole, the, the point is not to do it as good as somebody else that you've seen make something, the same thing. The point is to have fun making it yourself and, and get experience making it yourself. So we encouraged him to keep working on it and I'm glad he has because it's coming together very nicely. So this is uh, the space shuttle that Morak is creating. And then, of course, we have Edo, who is working on um, I think you've been working on the eye for your character, because Edo does character work. Android Lust does a lot of character work as well. Android Lust has done some really beautiful um, character stuff, so you guys should jump on the Discord, check out 
check out his stuff as well. I, what's going on here? I'm going to try and copy the link. Why is it taking me to a Discord? It's taking me to a Discord. Don't know why. <laughs> there are reasons for that. Let me see if I can copy this link. This is when I try and copy the link for the, to the actual video. Okay, here we go. The eyes looking really cool, Edo. Yeah, really nice. Very nice indeed. And Edo is in Marmoset, as you see here. Yeah, it's looking really cool. It always looks creepy when you see human body parts like this. I mean, again, maybe because I'm not a character artist, I'm not, I'm not used to seeing it. But it always it always looks weird, it, creepy, creepy to me when you see when you see eyeballs or or like an arm and a hand that aren't attached to anything. It just always looks creepy to me. But the the texturing is beautifully done. You've done a good job. Okay, so we got a good start on our uh, study here. We will continue, I think, working on our study tomorrow. Um, Andrew Glass says, I don't have a clap emote, but it's nice. <laughs> Smurfery there with the all seeing eye. Um, Beautiful work guys, really nicely done. And again, check out Android Lost characters as well in the gallery on the Discord server because he's done some beautiful work too. Um, Android Lost says, well eyes with no head can be creepy. Yuri says, pop them in the freezer and then use them for ice cubes. Freak out any, oh no, yuck, yuck. <laughs> oh man. Um, we will pick up where we left off here tomorrow. Uh, I do want to thank you guys so very much for being here and hanging out with me and for watching. We'll finish off, well, we'll, we'll keep going with our study tomorrow. Um, as always, though, I do want to thank you guys for watching. It is much appreciated. If you did enjoy the stream, be sure to follow, enjoy the stream, be sure to follow the channel. Um, you can follow me on Twitter as well, of course, at does 3 d If you want a reminder when I'm live, but I'm live every Monday and Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. My schedule does not change. Well, generally not, not unless I get sent away for work or if I'm on holiday, which I am after next week. So I'm streaming this week, I'm streaming next week, and then I'm off for two weeks, and then I'm back. So I'm just taking my mid-year break for two weeks. Um, but this week I'm on, next week I'm on, and then I'm off for two weeks. But I'll be back on again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. The scene is looking great, Phil, wonderful. Up. Thank you. Well, when we get some lighting happening, you'll get a better idea, uh, second favorite. We'll get a few more assets in and then I'll start putting some lighting in and we can start uh, playing with all that side of, all sort of thing in the Unreal Engine. But tomorrow we'll continue setting up the study. Again, thanks guys again for watching and for hanging out with me. Hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys take care, stay safe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow at 5pm. See you guys. <laughs>